Hello guys, in this video I want to discuss roots of polynomial and I want to prove the following statement. So I'm saying that alpha is a root of some polynomial f of x if f of x can be written as uh, x minus alpha times g of x. And I want to prove the statement. And I really, really like the statement and I will show you in a second why. So we know one part, if we have if and only if statement, it means you need to prove two directions. I need to prove sufficient and necessary condition. And you can see that uh, sufficient condition is really straightforward. So what for sufficient condition I have? I have that my f of x is written in the form x minus alpha times g of x. And I want to show that alpha is the root of f of x. So from here I want to show that alpha is a root of f of x. And here, if I want to show some statement, I have a definition. Alpha is the root of f of x. What is the definition that alpha is the root? We're saying that alpha is the root of f of x. If uh, f of alpha equals to 0. And yes, indeed. If I'm going to plug in f of alpha here, I will get that alpha minus alpha times g of alpha equals alpha minus alpha is just 0 times g of alpha, so it's equals to 0. So we are good. For first step, we are done. Why? Because this is really straightforward, uh, that alpha is the root of a complex. Okay, so sufficient condition is done, but Sometimes I work in math if you have two statements, if you have a, some theorem or statement and you have sufficient necessary condition, usually one direction is really straightforward, but other direction it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, I'm going to erase this one because I will need some space for show necessary condition. And the cool is my favorite part about like necessary condition. So I want to prove this direction. And here I have that alpha is a root of f of x, and then I want to show I want to show that f of x is equal x minus alpha times g of x. Okay, it's a good state. So how I'm going to show this? I'm going to expand uh, what I'm given. I'm given this statement: alpha is the root of f of x. So if alpha is the root of f of x, what do we know about alpha? We know that f of alpha equals to zero. Yeah. But before we're going to prove this one, let's just take some polynomial. And I'm going to take polynomial f of x equal x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n, n minus 1 plus, plus a1 x1 plus a0. Uh, one small comment. Here, you can ask why it took like this polynomial, and I have no linear coefficient. I can say that I have some linear coefficient, let's say b, and if b is non-zero, what can I do? I can divide both sides by b, and I'm going to get my polynomial without linear coefficient. So, let's not bother about linear coefficient. I have this polynomial, and I know for this polynomial that I have that f of lambda equals to zero. How am I going to prove this one? And the idea that I'm going to use, if I have this polynomial, and I know that f of alpha is 0, I know at some point my function is going to intersect uh, x-axis, xy. So let's say my graph looks something like this. And what I'm going to do with this graph, I'm going to move this graph, this root, to the origin. So I want to take this graph and uh, move it to the origin. So I have some point zero here. And how I'm going to show this? For this one, uh, the green one, I know that f of alpha equals to zero. And the new graph is, uh, let's say, some h of x. And what I know about h of x, that h of zero equals to zero, because it goes to the origin. And I want to express my h function in terms of f. And how I'm going to do this? I'm saying that h of x equals f x plus 
alpha. And why I'm making this choice? Because you can see if I will make x equal to 0, I will get that h of 0 equal f 0 plus alpha equal f of alpha. But I know that f of alpha it equals to 0. So h of 0 going to equal to 0. So I can do this transformation uh, when I'm sending, let me write this down. So I can do transformation then when I'm sending x to x plus alpha, and I'm going to set my polynomial f of x to the polynomial uh, that's h of x. Okay, I have that polynomial, and I send to this polynomial to h of x. And when I'm going to send this polynomial for f of x, uh, it's going to be actually equal to my h of x equals, since I'm sending each x to x plus alpha, I will have x plus alpha to the n plus a n minus 1 x plus alpha to the n minus 1 uh, plus dot 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 plus a1 x plus alpha plus a naught. Okay, and you're saying like, what is next? But I'm going to use one fact. Which fact I'm going to use? I know that f of alpha equals to zero. So if f of alpha equals to zero, I'm going to plug in alpha over here. So we'll get, I'm going to instead of x plug in my alpha. So we'll get alpha n plus a n minus one, alpha n a minus one plus, plus uh, a one alpha plus a naught equals to zero. Here, you can see, when you're going to expand each factor x plus alpha to some power, I'm going to get that my free coefficient is going to be alpha to the n plus a n minus 1 alpha to the n minus 1 da, 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 a1 plus a alpha plus a0. So my free coefficient is going to be equal to zero. Why? Because uh, we know that if we have x plus alpha to the n, then if I'm going to use binomial coefficients, I will get that it's going to be equal to x to the n plus n x to the n minus 1 uh, alpha plus dot 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 plus n uh, alpha n x times alpha to the n minus 1 plus alpha to the n. And you can see in this expansion, the first, uh, except the last one term, are going to be factor of x. So each of these, except the last coefficient, I will get have factor of x. So I'm just going to factor this x. And what I'm going to left with, I'm going to left with alpha to the n plus a n minus 1 alpha to the a n minus 1 plus the dot plus a1 alpha plus a naught. But this the whole thing is equals to zero. Let's say it's equals to zero. So what I'm gonna left, I'm gonna left that my I'm gonna raise this. I left that my h of x is equals x times some factor, some polynomial. Okay, and here is clear that h of zero is equals to zero times something, and this is equals to zero. Okay, so we constructed our h. And the idea is how to show this one. If I got h, if I got h by moving from x to x plus alpha, uh, I can come back to the f by subtracting alpha. So if I'm giving polynomial f of a, h of x, and I want to come back to polynomial f of x, I'm doing reverse operation. And for the reverse operation, I can see I need to send x to x minus alpha. And what I'm going to get? And I'm going to get that my f. So uh, my f of x is going to be equal to h uh, x uh, minus alpha. But h of, uh, h of x minus alpha, what is my h of? My h is this form, so we'll get that my h is x minus alpha times something. So my f of x is equal 
x minus alpha times something. And this something you can call this, uh, let's say, some polynomial g of x. So what you got, you got that your f of x is equal to x minus alpha times g of x. So summary of this one, if you want to prove this direction, you, uh, you need to write your polynomial. You need to shift polynomial by x plus alpha. You need to expand uh, your polynomial and factor x. And then when you're going to shift it back, you will get exactly this expression. Thank you.